Hello guys, in this video I will try to tell you the storyline of a film, Concussion. This film is based on a true story about an expert forensic pathologist named Dr. Bennett Omalu. He trying to present the results of his research on the NFL to reveal the real cause of death of the football player he handled. Concussion is focusing of the story about Dr. Bennett's struggles to convey the results of his research related to the safety of football players under the auspices of the NFL. It's not easy for Dr. Bennett to get his right to speak. Now, let's get to the story. I was scared I'd fail. Honest to God, I was scared I'd fail. I'm still scared of that. Dr. Bennett is a famous and an intellectual doctor. He has a series of educational degrees and good at express his opinion. He is so dedicated to his work as a forensic pathologist, he's always conscientious when doing his job. He also seems to be a religious person. He always prays and asks permission to the corpse he handled before doing his job. That's why Dr. Bennett different from his colleagues. But despite that, his actions sometime got him in trouble at his institution because he was considered too slow when doing his job. Please help me find out what happened to you. Here we go. The doctor actually is a friendly person. He likes to help others and can't refuse if anyone asks for his help. As a Nigerian, he often experiences a discrimination in America. But Dr. Bennett always trying to make the best of his life. You know the reason you're not back in Nigeria, don't you? Uh, yes, because I remind you of you. Only less handsome. I think you're working a little too slow. I, I, I treat them with respect. But you have to talk to them? On the other side, Mike Webster's is a football legend who lived at the lowest point in his life. His health condition continued to deteriorate. He became homeless because he didn't want to be at home. His behavior was out of control and his memory is declining. He had a great tendency to hurt himself. He is very worrying condition. The doctors who in charge of taking care of him were confused by Mike's condition. The scan results of his head did not show any indications what caused his condition. Mike finally found dead in his truck. What am I missing? All of his scans were clean. Cardiac arrest may be how he died, but not why. As usual, Dr. Bennett asked the corpse to talk before carrying out the autopsy. The body was dissected and he recorded some of the things that he found. He became anxious when he saw the results of his CT scan which looked normal, but his medical record showed things that were wrong, related to this neurologic nerve. Dr. Bennett felt something wrong. He intends to operate on his brain, but his colleague Daniel disallow it because his institution will not pay all the expenses. They had argued. Dr. Bennett insists to do the operation even he doesn't get paid. He really wants to dedicate his time to find the cause of death of Mike Webster. And you're paying for it yourself. Yes, Danny. Please, exit my workplace. Through the examination of microscopic slide of Mike's brain, Dr. Bennett finally found severe neurons trauma he had suffered. In order to make sure his conclusion, Dr. Bennett continued to pay attention to the way the football players did the exercises. There's so many violence happened, mostly severe head collision that might have caused a concussion. After watching all the training and competition, he realized that there was a brain disorder that could not be seen in a normal CT scan. To confirm it, Dr. Bennett went to see a neurologist, Stephen Dukoski. After he saw microscopic slide of Mike's brain, he also said that it was a bad thing. Bennett said that football is a game that is not suitable for humans. The human body is not designed to take very hard impacts, especially in the head. The new theory by Dr. Banner is that every impact on a football player can release killer proteins in the brain that cause uncontrollable thoughts, exactly like Mike Webster indications. This is a really terrible brain, which unleashed killer proteins upon Mike Webster's brain. God did not intend for us to play football. But I am telling you that playing football killed Mike Webster. His partner suggesting that the discovery named before publish in medical journal. The discovery from Dr. Bennett finally is about been published. It will became a major achievement in Dr. Bennett's life throughout his career. He named his discovery as chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE. The journal will be written on behalf of Dr. Bennett, Dr. Stephen and Dr. Cheryl. They hope that this journal can make the NFL is more capable to ensure the conditions of the players. But as a scientist, 
I can't deny it. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy. CTE. Omalu, Dukoski, and Cyril Weck. Uh. But, just before the journal was about published, there are new victims. It happened to a close partner of Mike Webster, Justin. He could not control his mind and died in a car accident. And then followed by Terry Long, who was about to commit suicide. Three big names in the football died at a very young age. Dr. Bennett decided to also autopsy Terry Long's body. They're telling me to kill Get you! Out! Get out! Get out! I need a full autopsy. Same test as Mike Webster. You pay him for that too? Yes, Danny, I'm paying for that too. Joseph Maroon. At that time his journal had published in the medical journal section. Unfortunately, what Dr. Bennett had discovered was unacceptable to Chris John and their NFL board. They withdrew the journal. They also said if Dr. Bennett is not educated enough to keep the journal. You're an uneducated quack and your career is over. Cheryl says that the NFL seems frightened by the discovery of the Dr. Bennett. The NFL warned Dr. Bennett to withdraw his journal if he want his carrier save, or the NFL will accuse his Dr. Bennett as a fraud. Now, their way to reveal cause of deaths of football players found the obstacle. If Dr. Bennett decides to defend his journal, then he's like fighting a major corporation with 20 million supporters. Cheryl unconvinced they can fight the NFL. They are at a crossroads to decide whether to continue fighting for the truth or quit to save their careers and lives. What do they want? They want you to say you made it all up. If you retract, you'll be fine. They're accusing you of fraud. Why are they doing this? They're terrified of you. Bennett Amalu is going to war with a corporation that has 20 million people on a weekly basis craving their product. But Dr. Bennett feels that he has a responsibility to deliver this to the world. With his determined and his considers to professional responsibility as a doctor, he finally chooses continuing to publish this discovery to the public, regardless of the risks that will be faced later. He just wants to save football players from the same risk of death as their predecessors. Medical Examiner's own Dr. Bennett Amalu. What do you think? That's so fucking American. This publicity is considered as a challenge by the NFL. Terrors came after that. His life is no longer peaceful. Or they'll be doing your autopsy. Until one morning, Dr. Bennett got a call from Julian Bales, a former doctor in the NFL who was also a close friend of Mike Webster's. Julian revealed his support for Dr. Bennett. They met at Julian's house. Shocking fact found by Dr. Bennett, it turns out that all this time the NFL already knew about the diagnosis of concussion, but they covered it up. Julian couldn't do what Dr. Banner did to uncover the fact. Julian's have the same purposes as Dr. Bennett's, is to reveal the risks of football players and the causes of death for players who were previously under Julian's attention, which is 12 people for several years. Julian wanted to stop everything. He didn't want any more victims. That's why Julian showed his support and help. Dr. Bennett asked Julian to help him to attend the commission meeting. But unfortunately, this could not be done. The NFL officials did not want to present Dr. Bennett or talking to him again. Julian convinced that Dr. Bennett will get discriminated if he insists on being present at the commission meeting. Julian advises that Dr. Bennett look for other proof to keep move forward and stop the actions of the NFL. Dr. Amalu, I'd like to talk with you. The NFL has known about this concussion crisis for years. And their conclusion? No striking player experienced neck injury or concussion. Why am I here, Dr. Bells? I'm up with the NFL. Do you know how many Pittsburgh Steelers, just Steelers now, have died? Twelve. Get me a meeting with the commissioner. Football does not want to talk to you. Besides, to them, you're not even American. You're a doctor? You have to keep going. In order for me to keep going, more have to die. Unfortunately, that's already happening. While Dr. Bennett's fighting for his right to speak, there are former players who are also struggling with their condition. Dave Duarson and Andrew Waters are some of Survivor who still can't find a solution for their condition. Dave have a better life, he is just promoted as a mayor. But, Andrew is worst, he looks suffered. He came to Dave to find a help for his pain. It turned out that they are friends from kids. When Andrew knew that Dave turned his back on him, he got disappointed. 
Then, Andrew Waters doesn't last long. He gave up on his condition and decides to commit suicide at the age of 44. After that, Dr. Bennett and Dr. Julian interviewed the family's victims to find out the indications found in CTE sufferer. This research and these discoveries are worth fighting for. Three doctors seem to choose against a big corporation with 20 million supporters. Bennett, Cyril, and Julian will republish their medical journals about CTE, hoping the NFL hears them. They have to listen to us now. At first, Bennett and Julian met Dr. Joseph Maroon, the team doctor for the NFL. Dr. Joseph rejected Dr. Banner's opinions. Dr. Joseph did not want to reveal the truth and chose to protect the NFL from accusations thrown by Dr. Bennett. They had argued. Dr. Joseph sticks out in his opinion and declares that he would keep protecting the business that makes America famous and moving forward by using the money from the NFL. That statement makes Dr. Bennett disappointed and unhappy. In Dr. Bennett's opinion, Dr. Joseph has broken his word of honor as a doctor and no longer stand by to the rules of humanity just for the sake of the football business. Dr. Bennett also said that Dr. Joseph also makes a human life as commodities to enrich others and destroy the lives of the player and their families. There was no agreement from that meeting. They challenged each other. We should be working together. Tell the truth. The truth. Who do you think you're talking to? Football is the most popular sport in America. I want to solve the problem. Who are you? Sir, I am not done. You sure you want to do this? Oh, your study. I'll get back to you. After that, Dr. Bennett become hopeless. He feels that he is not the right person to discover the theory. But, he always got supported from Prima. Prima said that Dr. Bennett is the right person. This is his faith. Prima also said that Dr. Bennett should keep continue conveying the truth, so that other football players can still have their lives, and the bad reputation of those who have died can be cleaned up. The truth must continue to be voiced and exposed, for the sake of justice and a better life. I am the wrong person to have discovered this. An amalo unyamalo kube. It means you must come forth and speak. If you don't speak for the dead, who will? The NFL got the information about the latest move by Dr. Bennett and Dr. Julian. They consider it as a threat. Then, they held a commission meeting with Cum as result by calling Dr. Bennett to make a presentation about concussion. The voice of truth was finally about to be heard. The next day, Dr. Julian came to Dr. Bennett's office to inform that the NFL commission has changed their decision. They would not let Dr. Bennett speak or being present at the commission meeting. The NFL only want Dr. Julian who presented the journal about concussion. Dr. Bennett feels offended. He think that because he is just a doctor from Nigeria then he doesn't get his right to speak in front of America. They had argued. But, Dr. Julian can convince Dr. Bennett that he stand by his side and not by NFL. Then Dr. Bennett give the journal and ask Dr. Julian to convince the NFL. It's not the sports section, not science. New York Times. Perhaps in the history of football at the NFL owners meeting in Illinois. They heard you. We have to talk. What's wrong? They're not going to let you speak. So they want to pretend that you don't even exist. That's right. That some African voodoo doctor could understand this subject. So here I am, up here beside you, not down there in that audience with them. Convince them, Julian. After the meeting, Dave Dorsum went straight to Dr. Bennett and told him to back to Africa. Unfortunately, the result of commission meeting not as they expected. Turn out the invitation is just a proof that NFL doesn't care about the discovery. Even on press conference after, the NFL claims that the player's head trauma is not related to football but due to past injuries. All the news is made to denial the discoveries of Dr. Bennett. Dr. Bennett feels that he falls into deep. You take your bullshit science, go back to Africa, and get away from our game. This whole thing was staged. They needed to say that they hurt us so they could goddamn bury us. This is an evolving science, and that's okay. With early onset of Alzheimer's? No. The next day, Dr. Bennett shock after finds out that Dr. Cyril got politic accusation with a corruption motive. Dr. Bennett refused to testimony against Cyril. He chose to resign of his job. 
Dr. Bennett realized that accusation on Cyril just to get him. But, if Dr. Bennett resigns from his job, then his immigration status will get revised. They show that they really want to expel Dr. Bennett from Pittsburgh. There's another problem. With all the tension happened, Prima feels that something wrong with her pregnancy. And finally, Prima suffered a miscarriage cause of panic after being followed by an unknown person in her car. What is this? This is the FBI. They could not come up with something this stupid in Nigeria. They want your testimony. Against you? Yes. And I will get another job in another city. That would be fine. That would be fine. I'm so sorry. There's no heartbeat. And with an advice from Prima, Dr. Bennett finally decided to leave Pittsburgh and move to Lodi, California. He leave his dream house so they can have a family in peace. Dr. Bennett and Prima lived in a small house. They have one kid. Prima is also pregnant for the second child. Dr. Bennett worked as a coroner at San Joaquin County Hospital. He still talk and ask permission to the body he autopsied. We will have this family. Yes, just not here. Tell me. It's going to be okay. Three years later, Dave Duerson was found dead. He have committed suicide due to his inability to survive with deteriorating cognitive function. In his suicide record, Dave admits that Dr. Bennett was right, and Dave donated his brain for further research. I, I just can't do this. I'm sorry. Dave Duerson killed himself today. Shot himself in the chest and the heart. Wants his brain to be donated. To be examined. Dr. Bennett invited to Neilpa conferences about concussions and CTE. On his speech, he said that he wished he never knew Mike Webster. But by knowing him, he feels that he had a responsibility to inform the NFL players the real risks they take by playing football. He tells them to forgive themselves and make peace. After the conferences, the NFL was forced by the Congress to observe and to consider the concussion issue more serious. Dr. Bennett was offered a job as chief medical examiner for Washington, D.C. Essentially, you're America's forensic pathologist. You exemplify everything it is to be an American. At the end of the film, it tells that Dr. Bennett declined the Washington offer to remain with his family in California. In 2011, over 5,000 former players sued the NFL for not properly informing them the dangerous of concussion. The NFL finally agreed for the demands. They would not disclose about the effect of concussion. All federal charges against Dr. Cyril were dismissed. Dr. Bennett declared a legal citizen of the United States in February 2015. So, that's the storyline of concussion. See you next time with different storyline. And, thank you for watching.